I started at CBU in the engineering department my freshman year and I actually was looking at going to a different university to study industrial engineering and ended up coming back to CBU thanks to a very tenacious admissions counselor, uh, Denny Bardos. While I was at CBU my freshman year, I had a, a job, a part-time job. I was working for a family friend who owned a bank in my hometown in Marion, Arkansas. And, and he might not admit it, but he barely knew my name when I was working for him. He'd call me Jack, Joseph, Jerry, which was my dad's name, anything but Josh. And he found out I went to CBU and started calling me John, which is a lot closer to Josh, right? And then he found out I pledged Teak, which he had been a member of at another university, and became an instant friendship. He, he learned my name from that moment on. I actually became probably one of my first real professional mentors uh, in life. When I was thinking about changing majors, I went and talked to him. Uh, about what I would do because he had actually was about to go to law school and instead decided not to go and started working in banking and ultimately own a bank and his explanation to me was he, he spent about a week sort of soul searching and decided that he thought he would never be more than a mediocre attorney and he wanted to be better than mediocre. I went through the Career Center, did a lot of assessments for them uh, trying to figure out what it was exactly I wanted to do. And when the information came back, it was pointing squarely towards business. So I was a statistic. I didn't have a job when I graduated. I uh, had looked at several places and really was close to getting one, but was just waiting on an offer. But I had decided to go into banking, and I went back to Mr. Jenkins and kind of got some advice from him and, and had interviewed at several banks, and he said, you know, why not NBC, which was at the time the bank that, that he had sold his bank to. And he said, you really need to be in commercial lending. So he made some phone calls for me, uh, backed it up with the fact that I had a good CBU education, and I was, was hired quickly by NBC to work as an analyst there. Uh, I had uh, moved to a business banking lender at NBC, uh, went on to Bank Corp South, uh, to be a commercial lender, more middle market, which is more what I do today. Uh, I had become the Alumni Association president for CBU, and Dick Godopsky had worked to get that position added to the Board of Trustees so that the alumni would have a voice at the Board of Trustees meetings as well. And at the first Board of Trustees meeting I went to, they had a reception in the library, and I met another trustee, Chip Dudley, who is the CEO and one of the co-founders of Independent Bank. Uh, we talked for a little while, you know, I told him about being a banker and a few months later he called me and asked me if I'd come have lunch with him and six months after that I was working at Independent Bank where I am today, you know, back with a bank that's headquartered in Memphis uh, in a position that I really wanted to work in uh, at a, at a uh, bank that has a lot of upward opportunities for me and it's been great and I owe CBU a huge debt of gratitude for that. Not just the education they gave me, but the opportunities they gave me to be in the right place at the right time. I mean, just being willing to be involved as an alum and CBU wanting me to be involved as an alum ultimately led to me meeting Chip at that uh, reception and led to me having this job. So, uh, I mean, I owe CBU so much. You know, my degree, my wife, my career, it's, it's pretty much everything. I was fortunate enough to meet my wife there. Uh, I had lived on campus, I lived on campus all four years, and in my junior year, I was a peer counselor. Well, I had a, a class of about 12 freshmen, and my wife wasn't one of them. Uh, but we had a, uh, we had a, this Playfair event uh, where all the classes got together and did various activities, and, and I met her there, although I, we didn't really talk much. Uh, we ran into each other again on the uh, uh, sidewalks and talked for a little while, probably a couple of days later, and then uh, she ended up being really good friends with a good friend of mine, and within about three months of her getting to school, we were, we were going out on a date, and, and probably if she knew that it was going to last 14 years, uh, maybe she would have reconsidered. But uh, we have a three-year-old son named Sam who is a spark plug. He's uh, uh, just as wild as can be. We, we like to say that he's all boy. Uh, his ears don't work very well. He doesn't like to listen to us much, but he keeps us on our toes. And we have a three-month, well, three-month-old today daughter, uh, Nora, uh, 
who was uh, born in June and is just growing like a weed and started smiling at us about two weeks ago and and it's great right now because everything you do is funny you know so she's she's just been wonderful and she's sleeping pretty good right now too well we we have to embrace the Lasallian tradition right and you know we at the board level we talk so much about what that means and, and how do you market that how do you how do you get you know high school seniors to really understand what it is and, and the problem is is it's hard to put that on paper it, it's an experience I'm a brother's boy I graduated from CBU Sharon's a brother's girl uh, we 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 have learned what those ideals are, and we continue to learn them every day. While I was in college, I didn't realize what I was learning because I was too busy, you know, having social experiences and learning stuff in, in my business classes to really realize what was happening. But when I got out and realized that I wanted to give back, uh, I realized I, I learned that while I was at CBU. I learned it because I saw what the brothers were doing, you know, being in fraternity meetings with us at 9 o'clock at night when they could be doing anything else they wanted to do, right? Or working at the math lab or the writing lab to help us, you know, understand what it is we were working on and, and get things done right. We have to recognize that, that um, our brothers are a fantastic resource, but they can't do it alone. We, we need to take up uh, our piece and, and do the work with them. And I think CBU's doing a great job of it. I mean, you look at September of Service, which is one great example of uh, the CBU community uh, really trying to, trying to show our LaSallean roots. My, my degree is only as valuable as a CBU education is today, whether I'm there or not. So I need to keep participating with CBU's uh, giving program, I need to give back to them so that they have the best technology, so that they have the best programs, so that they have the best facilities that will attract students who want to come and want to achieve, uh, so that we can fund the scholarships that we need to fund to attract the best students that fit in the CBU uh, environment. And when the school can do that effectively, which they can only do if alumni help and, and give back. Even if I have student loans, we're still paying Sharon's student loans, but we give because we know that CBU is going to use that money to make a really good uh, product. They're going to turn out a really good graduate. And when places like AutoZone and FedEx and IP and Independent Bank and others hire CBU students, they're really impressed with the work ethic they have, how much they achieve, how much they know when they come out of school. And CBU can't do that without our, without our donations. So it makes my degree more valuable when those students graduate and get great reviews from their employers. Because those employers look at it and say, yeah, CBU is a great place. And then more employers say, hey, wait a minute, CBU is a great place. And then on top of that, the more the alumni give, the more CBU can get from foundations and others because foundations want to give to winners, right? And when we can show that we have a 30, 40, or 50 percent alumni giving percentage, they're going to want to participate in that because they're going to say their alumni believe in it and we want to back it too. If I was going to be a character on Fast and Furious, it'd probably be Brian O'Connor played by Paul Walker. In fact, when Karen asked me for a headshot, uh, I sent her his headshot, convinced that she wouldn't be able to tell the difference anyway, right? I mean, and, and uh, she did email me back that she'd received it, uh, but with a message that she'd just spit out her coffee laughing about it. So, so I don't think I fooled her. Um, but you know, they're, they're excellent movies. They're, they're some of my favorite movies. And uh, in particular, the, the scene, I guess, in the, the fifth one, where you know they're, they're still in the bank vault from the police station, uh, with, with all the, the money and gold in it and they used the two cars to pull it out and if I had finished my engineering education at CBU I could probably explain whether or not that was even possible which I highly doubt uh, but instead I finished my, my business degree and now I'm in banking so I'd be more concerned about uh, protecting the safe they stole than explaining whether or not it could be done but you know they're great movies and you really should ask Karen if you haven't seen one because uh, her and Pete went with Sharon and I to go see them 
and uh, we had a blast. We've already agreed to go see the next one when it comes out. We've got the date saved on our calendars.